Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Caroline Stengel. Today you are hearing my budgies in the background and my cockatiels and they're going to accompany us as we go through step by step how to paint a watercolor dream catcher. This is specifically for my lovely students at the Adult Center. We're going to have two different birds, a hummingbird and a robin. The robin is a little simpler and I'll go through it step by step so that you can follow along. Good luck and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is tape down your watercolor paper onto a rigid board or your table and then draw two circles the same size, leaving room for the feathers underneath. Then you're going to draw some eggs and a rough circular outline of a nest. For hummingbirds, they only lay two eggs, but I made a mistake and drew three. Oh well. Now choose your bird. The hummingbird is more challenging and the robin is the easy option. You choose. To draw a hummingbird, start with two ovals for the body and the head. Then draw the tail by making a slightly curved rectangle shape. It kind of looks like a fan. Add the beak and connect the other shapes to form the body outline. For hummingbird wings, draw the curved triangles coming off the back of the body. Give your hummer a little eye and then add any details to the body that you would like. For example, there's a little V-shape in the tail and a fold under the wings. For a robin, you start the same way with two ovals. There's the larger one for the body. A robin's body is bigger, so the big oval for its main body is bigger, and the head is a slightly larger oval as well. Now you can connect those two shapes with a body outline and move on to the next stage. The robin's beak is a little bit blunter and shorter, unlike a hummingbird, which is sort of like having a sword stuck to the front of your face. The robin's wings are different because it doesn't fly like a miniature helicopter. You can draw the wings with curved lines that come to a point at the wingtip, a little bit bent in the middle. The robin's tail is a slightly longer rectangle that widens a bit. Don't forget your robin needs a little eye to spot worms with. Now it's time to paint. Get your paints, brushes, a paper towel, and two jars of water set up. For a more detailed nest, brush little lines to create the texture of all those twigs. Vary your colors, choosing earth tones and mossy greens. Add some darker colors to create a stronger contrast. Now the tricky bit. With a dark color, paint the area around the eggs. This is going to take some careful control. It helps to outline the eggs before you paint the rest of the area.
That was complicated. Soon I'll show you a simpler version. Now we're going to look at when the nest is dry and you can paint shadows on the eggs. I started with a very dark shadow and I wasn't totally happy with it, so I messed around with it a little bit. You can see here that I'm just applying the darkest part of the shadow to the edge of the eggs. And then I take some of the moisture out of my brush and I'm going to go back in and rework them a little. I'm spreading that shadow out to lighten it up so that the whole egg has a little bit of a gray tone except for the highlight right at the top. Taking my time and just messing around with it until I like it. Isn't that what art is? Working on something until you like it? So gradually I work up my shadows and I ended up blotting them at the end. I'm just applying some water here to bring the highlight back a bit more and now I'm blotting them. So the shadows end up being fairly subtle, but I was happy with them that way. You can do yours in any style you like. And now the simpler version for the robin's nest. It's a good idea to test your colors and you've got a little bit of spare paper on the outside of your circles, so go ahead and use that space. Start with the robin eggs or you can paint the nest first. It's your choice. I'm using what I call robin egg blue. It's a really nice color. Sort of like a shady turquoise. Use a clean brush to lift up some of the color and to create highlights. It's an easy way to get a highlight with a shadow around the edge. Let your eggs dry completely before you paint the nest around them. Otherwise your colors will mix up and the eggs won't look so nice anymore. For a simple nest, paint fat lines with earth tones. Easy, right? Darken your colors as you paint towards the center of the nest. That will give the illusion of the shadow where the nest dips down to hold the eggs. You can add lines of texture if you want to suggest those nest materials like twigs and stuff. When your eggs are completely dry, you can paint the dark center of the nest around them. But like I said, make sure they're dry, because if those eggs are wet, the dark color will move into the egg area and ruin them. It helps to outline the eggs first, then fill in the rest. You need a steady hand for this, so just take your time and be patient. Take your time, like I said, don't rush those details. Try to enjoy yourself.
Let's keep going with the robin and a simpler approach. Now I'm mixing a nice earthy brown to paint the body of the robin. Robins range from being gray to this earthy brown. I like brown, so I'm going to go with the warmer color. Look at those nice strokes. You can do the wings in two or three strokes if you're really patient and uh, have good control. Paint the wings, the head, back, and tail with your earthy brown color, but leave a little bit of white around the eye, on the throat, and don't paint the beak. And leave the belly white so that you can paint it red later. Now mix a rusty red so that you can paint the robin's belly. Robin's bellies vary in color, so you can choose what kind of red you like and test your colors out until you're happy with it. It's just a very small triangle of belly there. Only a little bit shows under the wing and then a tiny bit above the wing. Now use a very dark brown to paint the eyes, the stripes on the throat, and the beak. Leave that little white ring around the eye. It makes it stand out a bit more. Now back to the hummingbird for those of you wanting a challenge. This one's a lot more detailed than the robin. Here I'm painting the tail feathers using a light brown. You can paint individual feathers using the tip of your brush. The same color can be used to paint the wings. And again, you can use the tip of your brush to make individual feathers. There's a little bit of brown on the body as well. Up to you how much you want to put on there. Now I'm cleaning my palette to make room for a new color, light green. So Anna's Hummingbird has mostly creamy white, light green, brown, and then a little bit of red on the head. Every bird is different, slightly, and you can uh, use your imagination too. You don't have to paint an Anna's Hummingbird. Use your brush tip to paint little flecks of green or whatever colors you choose for your bird. And then mix a dark color to paint the beak and the tiny eye. The male Anna's hummingbird has a cherry red head that shimmers. So I mixed a bright red and then I applied it with the brush tip so that I could make little individual feathers. It took a bit of patience. But if you go slow, you can do it. The red goes all the way around from the crown of the head down to the throat and down the neck a little bit. It's quite a large uh, area and it really flashes in the sunlight. To embellish the wings, you can paint darker feathers on top after the original light brown dries. Use the same dark color to give your Hummer two tiny feet tucked in under her feathers, or his actually in this case. And now you can decorate the edges of your circle. I chose to make a uh, vine with leaves and some flowers. You can do whatever you like. Just have fun. Use some colors. Get creative, let yourself loose on the paper.
I like doing these little spirals. They look like tendrils, little vines reaching out for the sunlight. Now I'm adding the same red that I used for the head feathers. I'm adding some flowers using that color. Kind of like a fuchsia flower, but not quite. I don't know if this flower exists in reality. I'm just making something up. And now back to the robin and the decorative border that I painted for that bird. In this case, it's some very simple leaf shapes, and then I'll make some pink blossoms. I wanted it to look like an apple tree or apple blossoms because robins really like to nest in an apple tree. And it kind of also looks a bit like a cherry tree. They also love cherry trees and they love to eat the cherries. And now for some feathers. Let's start with the simple version. This is a great opportunity to practice using your brush. Feathers can be made with just a simple single brush stroke that's tapered at both ends. You can do as many as you like and just do them in a single stroke. See how that goes. You should have plenty of room on the bottom of your paper for quite a few feathers. So even if a couple of them are duds, you'll have a few that you can use with your project. With a contrasting color, paint the thin feather vein and any details you'd like to add. I like to add a few little tendrils of down feathers right at the bottom of the feather by the quill and then a couple of lines coming out from the central vein to show the texture of the individual feather barbs that grow out of the vein there. Up to you how much detail you'd like to include. The vein is probably the most essential part and then the rest is up to you. Each feather can be unique. Take your time and see what kind of results you get by experimenting. You have quite a few feathers to try it out on, so you might have a few that you like better than the others. Now we're going to cut out the circles and the feathers. Remove the masking tape and get out your scissors. This is the last stage. Exciting. You're almost finished. Then we're going to put it all together. Be careful that you follow your original pencil outline carefully closely as you can because you want these two circles to match. Leave a little bit of a white paper edge when you cut each feather out so that you have a bit of space there um, and a place to put your thread through right by the end of the quill. They almost look real. I like that. It's kind of magical. Now you need a glue stick to glue your circles together. Match them up as closely as you can. And then you can trim the edges a second time if you need to. Now you can decide what order you'd like your feathers to be in. 
He used a sharp sewing needle to pierce a hole at the very top. And then at the bottom edge, you're going to space out your feathers. So put your holes where you want each feather to go at the bottom of the circle. You might notice I'm wearing a thimble. I stabbed myself and realized I needed to wear a thimble to protect myself, so be careful. Don't stab yourself. Pierce holes at the top of each feather. Make sure you leave a little bit of room so that the hole doesn't tear. And then we're going to start beading. I recommend using beads a little bit bigger than these. These ones are seed beads and it was tricky to get my needle through them. I didn't have the right kind of needle and you had to use quite a few of them. So maybe I'll send out slightly larger beads in our kits. Good luck. Good luck with threading your needle. That is such a pain, but it teaches you patience. I finally got my needle threaded and I'm ready to start picking up some beads. How many beads you use is up to you. The beads are just uh, spacers to decorate the threads and they keep the feathers dangling a little bit below the circles. You need a loop of beaded thread at the top to hang up your artwork and then you'll have beads on your threads that hold the feathers onto the bottom. Watch out for those feline art critics. Look at that, my cat was putting his nose in to see what I was doing. This stage takes a bit of patience but just take your time. So you thread your needle through the circle, tie it off, and then add some beads to it. As many as you'd like. Go through your feather, and then you need to go back through the beads, and then back through your circle, and then you can tie it off. You can choose which side you want your feathers to face. I wanted mine to be on the side with the bird on it because that was the most decorative side in my mind. But you can turn them around or have some facing the nest side and some facing the bird side. And they will definitely turn and twist in the breeze so you'll see the white side of them some, some of the time. You may choose to paint the other side of your feather as well so that you have a feather painting on both sides of the paper. Like I said, this part requires patience, it takes a little bit of time, but keep going until all your feathers are attached. You're almost finished. Now we're coming to the end. I hope you'll hang your beautiful creation somewhere you can see it every day. Or if you give it away as a gift, I'm sure that it will be greatly appreciated. Make sure you sign it. And congratulations, you just made it through the project. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's a bonus video with some of the extra details that I did on my project. Hope you enjoy that as well. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.